Good evening. Ah, good evening. This is Honorable Abdella from Lagos, Salam. Very much. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Um, last week, um, we had the, what you are having on the screen right now is what we are have last week. Last week, we have um, uh, Mr. Chef all the way from Canada, and we have other other presenters from South Africa and also and also uh, Egypt last week. So this is the event of the day. So I just want to quickly go to uh, the, this initiative is all about coming together to foster dialogue and sharing stimulating art projects to improve creativity and art appreciation with the vision to build network of art educators across the continent of Africa that are locally relevant and influential with global perspective. That is where we are gathering every every Sunday at 8 p.m. to actually inspire one another and also to, just for the purpose of advancing the learning field of art in Africa. Uh, tonight our presenter, so uh, tonight as you can see our agenda for tonight, we will be having presentation from Mr. Olubenga Oladimeji. The topic is we discovery lost heroes in pre with Nigerian art education. We have that for just 20 minutes. And we have So we have Prince Olusha Gandini. He will be sharing about the adventure of an art, an art teacher. That should just about 15 minutes. Then we will get, we take some questions. Then we also take, we also uh, take future opportunities are waiting all of us all. So um, tonight we are starting with Mr. Olubenga. Now, right now I'm sharing the profile of Mr. Olubenga Oladi Meji Isaac. Um, Mr. Olubenga Oladi Meji Isaac is the chairman of the Society of Nigerian Artists of the State Chapter and also the founder of Divine Connect Art Gallery in Ijebode. He has so much to offer us tonight. I will want us to be attentive and listen to his presentation. Mr. Benga Ladimeji, I don't know if you want to share your screen or I should share your slide from my side. Uh, you should please share it from your side. Okay, good. I'm going to do that right now. Yes, I'm doing that right away now. Thank you so much. Okay, I, I, I believe that we can all see my screen now. So you can take over from there, sir. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody in the house. Um, I want to thank uh, the organizers of this uh, program for giving me this privilege to share this knowledge with all the artists on board. Well, tonight's topic uh, says rediscovering lost heroes in pre-Nigerian art education. Um, we might be looking at it that uh, who are those uh, lost heroes? There are a lot of people, even before the advent of Nigeria, who had already contributed so much to the development of art education uh in pre-nigeria that is before nigeria became a nation or a country so and many of those uh heroes uh were not even given chance or they are not being remembered or maybe they have been captured in the in some of the past uh, textbooks written by the european people uh, but tonight, uh, I will be sh uh, sh shedding light on some of these heroes. And at the same time, their contribution to the development of art. That is to let us know that art in Nigeria started even before what we call Nigeria today 
began. Now, uh, when we are talking of uh, indigenous art education before colonization, the structure of art education during pre-Nigeria uh, can be categorized as tri-structures. Tri-structures. I'm talking of three chords woven together as one. Um, before the interpretation of uh, the white man, that is the interpretation given to art that we are using today. In Africa, we have uh, the kind of art that we practice. Um, and our art can be categorized into three major categories. That is, our art has to do with our belief, that is the spiritual, the Another aspect of the art has to do with fine, that is, which has to do with aesthetic or decoration. And the third aspect deals with applied or industrial, in today's uh, world, we call it applied or industrial art, which is more of commercial or domestic uh, art. But one good thing about African art is that all the product of the art are produced for a purpose. It is not just for uh, art for art's sake, as uh, being uh, divine fine arts in, in Western world. Um, looking at uh, the traditional arts education, it has to do with, uh, um, it has to do with psychology, it has to do with uh, spiritual, it has to do with uh, the need for them. And uh, we equally, there is no community or village or city in Africa that is not having its own uh, art centers or what we can refer to as uh, art schools today. Uh, just to mention some of those uh, centers before the advent of uh, Nigeria as a nation, we have traditional arts education schools or centers in the following area based on their specialization. Uh, looking at uh, wood carving, we have art schools, I mean, of uh, wood carving in places like uh, Isheikiti or Yeikiti. Usi, Ilori, uh, Ilesha, and some other parts of the country, even as far as a year where they have Gelede and the rest. So all those centers uh, can be likened to what we refer to as former school today. Then we equally have centers like where uh, Calabash carving are being carried out then. We have the Calabash carving schools like, uh, in, I mean, in locations like uh, Oyo and northern parts of uh, Niger uh, of the then uh, um, Africa. Now, when we are talking of uh, Calabash carving, the importance of Oyo when it comes to Calabash carving informed the 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 prophet that says be onire be onire se oba fin gba mo ile to ti fin sile ku ma parun that is the man referred to as onire se is the one who happened to be a specialist in calabash carving and in 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 view of what he has done that is the 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 kind of a uh, uh, number of calabash that the man produced during his own lifetime uh, was so enormous to the extent that they referred to him that he has done so much to the extent that his footprint in the sand of time cannot be easily forgotten. Yeah. Then we equally have meta sculpture, what we refer to as meta sculpture today. Then it was being referred to as blacksmithing in Africa. So, and um, this blacksmithing of it in due to his, I mean, its uh, attachment to 
the belief of the people, because they believe that Ogun is the god of iron and is the one that normally, um, you know, uh, uh, produce a path for people to 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 work on. So uh, that uh, blacksmith schools, you know, litters every community. There is no community that. Uh, that, that does not, you know, at least have maybe one or two uh, blacksmithing centers in their in their areas. So then we have another one which has to do with uh, cloth weaving. Cloth weaving, we uh, we equally have some communities or or towns that are that that they are special they, that that are specialized in uh, cloth weaving. Uh, match weaving and all everything that has to do with uh, yeah, maybe uh, weaving of clothes or weaving of uh, mats and center a uh, uh, school of uh, I mean such a school of uh, uh, cloth weaving uh, we we have places like uh, in Yoruba uh, axis and then we have as uh, some other centers like uh, in Kano, in Oshobo, Abe Okuta, you, you know, where they produce and they die there. And some of those centers are still in existence now. And Kwara is another place where we can find this type of uh, uh, schools. Then another part of it, another uh, school of uh, arts, then this has to do with. Uh, 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 poetry. We have poetry schools where they, they produce domestic uh, uh, utensils that we, we 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 use then to prepare our meal and at the same time to offer sacrifice to gods. So, and we 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 have uh, uh, places like um, um, Imokwe in the Jebu area, and we have uh, another place in a uh, Abuja area and we equally have every community can uh, we, we we can uh, uh, say authoritatively that every community equally produce their home poetry as at that time so uh school of poetry is everywhere and that is what we can you know when merge with uh, wood carving uh, calabash carving and then uh, poetry you know that can be uh, categorized under three-dimensional arts in uh, under the traditional art school. So then the method of teaching, uh, teaching some uh, uh, all the, uh, some of these uh, uh, artworks then, uh, it has to do with, uh, uh, I refer to it as indigenous method of teaching, that is uh, the, 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 the most important uh, methods adopted at that time uh, has to do with uh, demonstration and learning by watching. That is apprenticeship, uh, 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 apprenticeship uh, methods. And then admission into those schools then has to do with interest and then family treat. Because not it is not open to just everybody. So we have some family that specialized in all these area mentioned as uh, you know uh, as a school of art today so uh is either the, uh, the 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 trend is being passed down from one generation to another and that uh, uh makes it difficult for just anybody to just jump into such and say they want to learn it so it is family trait and uh, whoever that is interested must equally come and register and pay some things, I mean, uh, to the, 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 the teacher who will teach such uh, students. Then, uh, likewise, on graduation, you know, by the time you, the, the, the artist will have acquired all the necessary skills that we make him to be referred to as a professional artist then. Then uh, that is the mastery of skills, competency, 
and uh, professionalism and certification will be given to the person and which will be celebrated like uh, what we refer today as a graduation that uh, we observe in our higher institutions and uh, in some colleges today. Now, uh, the, 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 the major, uh, because the topic of today says the uh, rediscovery lost heroes. At uh, that time, we have some uh, uh, specialists that are so versatile in each of the area mentioned here tonight. Uh, for instance, as far back as uh, uh, 1800, we have a lot of things, but due to no documentation of uh, our history as at that time, because it has to do with oral uh, uh, records, whereby we pass from uh, one generation to the upcoming ones. You know, there are a lot of uh, some of those specialists that, that, could, that, that their name are not being mentioned along the line. Uh, but as far back as 1880, we have uh, somebody like uh, Dadaro Ogun of uh, Usi Lorin. He was born in 1880 and uh, died in 1954. Uh, he's one of the indigenous wood cover and a virtual uh, of a repute in his and he gave back to another person who took over from him, George Bamidili Arugun. That uh, he, he was born in 1910 to 1995. We, uh, he happened to be the son of uh, Dada Arugun, uh, who was born in 1880 to 1954. Then. We have uh, another person who happened to be uh, a recognized uh, uh, professor of wood carving, uh, who died in 19, who died in 2009, and he was born in 1928. And the person happened to be Lamidi, Professor Lamidi, Olo um, Nodi Fakeye. You know, uh, this man. Uh, uh, his contributions to the development of traditional arts uh, was immeasurable because um, from his own generation to another generation, you know, he was able to serve as a link that is to bridge in the gap between the tra core traditional, that is indigenous arts to modern arts that uh, we practice today. So, uh, but one thing happens along the line because due to uh, the coming of uh, the Westerners to this part of the world, they try, they try all their best, they, uh, 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 they try all their best to disabuse the mind of uh, the indigenous uh, citizens from, you know, develop, uh, having interest in what they have as their own heritage. And this heritage happened to be the only thing that showcase the 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 creativity and the, the skills of the indigenous African people to the world. For instance, when we are talking of uh, wood carving, hybrid carving, we, we, we talk about a uh, 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 bini hat, we talk about a uh, ife uh, hat, we talk about knock hat, which happened to be the oldest of her. So when they came, they tried to uh, you know, brainwash us by saying that, yes, all these things are, you know, purely evil. And as a result, many drop interest in picking uh, a, a specialization in all the area mentioned. So it, it, those uh, 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 profession were now being seen as something that nobody should even near at all. And many who use it as their means so of survivor because as at that as at that time they, they, there wasn't anything like uh, 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 what 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 we refer today as a, a lack of a job or unemployment because every home you know belongs to one center of a, a, a crafts or 
or, or, or ads as being mentioned here. So no or, or no account should anybody be found idle, not doing anything. But when they came, they tried to disabuse our mind against all those things by saying that, oh, it is evil, uh, we should not practice it, and it is barbaric and all kind of uh, derogatory word were being used to uh, disabuse the mind of people practicing those acts then. So uh, in their effort, they tried to refocus that indigenous arts, you know, towards their, to, to propagate their own uh, religion. And that informed Oyeikiti, seven years experimental workshop that took place in 1947 to 1954. And the product of that uh, Oyeikiti is what you are seeing on, the, on, the, on your screen now. The, the first image there happened to be the Agere Ifa, you know, produced by Olowe. Olowe is another a uh, major wood cover in in a uh, in Ikiti as at that time. So, and um, you know the second one, oh, the the one in the middle is that of a uh, bini that is a uh, the, the 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 mask of a uh, first act mask, uh, the the one we use in 1970 uh, and culture. And then the, the, the third uh, happened to be the, the, the Okma Ayu game. That is, that one happened to be the Ayu game that, uh, you know, the, the, you can find in the, in the, in the palace of uh, the Oba. You know, there are certain artworks that are mainly for the palace. That is, uh, and majorly, uh, the king and uh, the high chiefs are the people that patronize um, uh, those that are practicing those uh, art work, I mean, art schools there. So on no account, so they lack job because most of the time they are being commissioned to produce one thing or, that or the other, either door post or either um, uh, domestic uh, materials for uh, their own use there. So... Now, the falling of these traditional hearts became obvious in 1930 to 1960. That is, the falling of interest and on learning of tra uh, traditional arts, you know, uh, uh, was now uh, being obvious in 1930 to 1960. So, and uh, that informed the type of heart that Onobolu embraced in his own time. You know, Onobolu equally belongs to 18, uh, 1882. You know, he was born in 1882. Um, and then the traditional art had already been facing condemnation from the white people. So, and as a result, I know Onobolu detests uh, traditional art. And he, he equally joined the white to condemn uh, traditional hearts as at that time. So he came up embracing white men uh, 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 modern hearts, which we refer to as modern hearts in our own uh, term. And likewise, it was at that at the, it was the same time that the the Western world equally dropped their own. Uh, art to embrace African hearts. We can now see the influence now. As, the, as African art is influencing the Western world, so also the Western world uh, was equally influencing uh, African hearts as at that time. Now, um, Onobolu was born in 1882 and died on the 3rd of February 1963. You know, uh, I mean, the, the, something about his uh, uh, family history will be discussed another day. Um, in his own time, he, he happened to be the one who uh, championed the introduction of uh, art into Nigerian, uh, I mean, into African education because he was the first to start practicing uh, 
Western world uh, type of uh, arts. You know, he started by self training and he trained himself and mastered the tricks behind the production of uh, 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 European arts. And then uh, the picture you are seeing here, these are some of his works that he produced in his own time. Uh, the, 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 we, in, in, uh, some of his work has to do with a uh, drawing, you know, he masters, uh, uh, I mean, the, 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 the proportion, uh, all the, uh, the, the, element, the elements and the, the principles of art and all this, you know, reflected in all the work produced by Aino Nobulu. Um, the picture you are seeing here, the, here is Aino Nobulu and the last governor of uh, 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 the then uh, colonial period. That is General Sir James Robertson. And uh, uh, the, the picture was, uh, uh, you know, was took on 15 June, 1955. You know, um, uh, Robertson was, uh, you know, was the governor, uh, the governor general here in, 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 in this part of the world that is Nigeria, because the amalgamation of uh, Nigeria with, uh, I mean, the South and the North uh, came to reality in 1914. So uh, this general governor, that is Sir uh, James Robertson, happened to be the last governor of uh, the Nigerian before independence. He, 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 he marked that position on the 15th June, uh, I mean, uh, 1955, to uh, 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 16th of November, 1960. Around, and you can see uh, uh, Chief Aino Nobolu and the governor in his studio at uh, Shola and K Street, Ibuti Meta. So some of the works of uh, Aino Nobolu, uh, the hero and the presenter of African modern hearts, you know, uh, the one exhibited here that is, the, that is on, on display, you know, uh, the first one has to do with uh, the drawing, has to do with uh, the live drawing of uh, 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 of a lady that is the bust, I mean, the, the portrait of a lady, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, uh, done in pencil. And the other one, the, the one below it is the, is the, is the, is the, is the uh, uh, portrait of uh, uh, Spencer Savage. And likewise, we the, it's some of the paintings that, are, that you are seeing there, is, uh, the, the one in uh, Agbada Regalia is that of uh, uh, the portrait of uh, Chief Sapara Williams. Then the one next to it is, uh, the, they call the title C.C. Norse. And the one that, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, that is the one next to, um, uh, the, the 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 drawing of a uh, uh, Spencer Savage is yeah uh, I mean uh, um, uh, painting of a weaver, which uh, happened to be some of the work he produced in a, 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 a where he did the exhibition then, and likewise the the the, the last one happened to be Iya Ladura with uh, Bibeli Mimo. And um, now, the post-independence of Nigeria, that is the, po the post-independence uh, art practice in Nigeria, after the amalgamation of uh, indigenous and foreign style, because uh, Kenneth Cross Murray, who was born in 1902, and he came to Nigeria in 1927, uh, under the invitation of uh, Chief Aino Nobulu, uh, was instrumental to the new Nigerian art identity that uh, manifested in the middle of the uh, 20th century, leading to the in increase in the number of uh, African artists. Uh, and uh, that effort produced uh, artists like Professor Oliver Himwobu, uh, Professor Yusuf Grillo, Professor Solomon Irewangoje, Demas Ungoko, Professor Dele Jegede, and a lot of them that uh, 
uh, cannot be mentioned here, you know. And then uh, one thing that, uh, that, that, that I want to bring out in tonight's presentation is that uh, the last time while uh, 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 Dr. Shegoludi uh, was uh, presenting his paper, he mentioned some terms which has to do with learning, making, unlearning, and remaking. You see, we learn certain things based on our way of life, you know, from the onset. And much later, we, we reproduce what we learned. But as time goes on, uh, the intrusion came whereby it disabuses our mind to what we know how to do best before, you know. And at that point in time, we decide to unlearn, I mean, the old way of doing things. And that informed Onobolu coming up to embrace new things. And at the end of the day, Onobolu condemned the old, embraced the new. And another set of people came, condemned the new, and merged the old and the new together. And today, we have our own identity because every work produced in Africa now or in Nigeria reflects the identity of people here. Although we have some artists that, that you know, produce uh, basically European arts, but that will not make them to become. So and what the world is expecting from us is our own, what we produce by ourselves from home here. And that is what they are expecting from us. They want to see new things. They want to see novel. And um, if we don't input what we have into the, and merge it with the new knowledge that we are acquiring now, it may make us to be forgotten. But it is my prayer that, um, well, civilization will not block our eyes to the point of saying that we will not even uh, embrace what belongs to us. So uh, on this note tonight, I want to thank you for listening to me. And uh, I believe that uh, one way or the other, we, we, we must have learned one or two things from the issue of tonight. And then um, if there's any other things, you know, unclear about uh, this presentation, I think uh, during the time of question and answer, then I will come up with uh, answers to them. Thank you so much for listening to me. And I, uh, I, I thank you all. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Oladimeji, for that wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to take our question immediately. I have another presentation to make tonight. I'm going to make it so brief so that we can take our questions because of our time. My, I, I, what I'll be just be sharing is my own personal adventure as an artist in Nigeria. So I just want you to be attentive again. I will not take much of our time. I will be brief about my presentation tonight. And the purpose of sharing this is just to inspire some of the artists in the house tonight, and also to share what I have been doing uh, as 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 an art educator to advance the learning field of art education in Nigeria. And I've, I've been so fortunate to work with a school and a director that uh, uh, appreciates art, educa art education. And I have received enormous support from my director. That is that is Dr. Ola Adebogun. And I have a lot of people here tonight that have, in one way or the other, supported my work. Um, I have I have one, uh, Mrs. Adeniyi, from the uh, Minister of Education in the house tonight too. The woman, has, you have been so supportive of my work and I'm so grateful for that. I have Pastor uh, Felix in the house too and so many other people here tonight that have supported my work as an art educator. And that makes it so easier for me to actually achieve what I have achieved in my life. Last year, I got the I got the President Tisha Excellent Award to the glory of God. And also I got, in, uh, I got Inspirational Teacher of the Year Award also 
And I have this year my student won another award in London. That is the uh, David Shepard Award in London this year. That was in March, just before the, the lockdown. So um, briefly, I just want to, I have so many awards, but uh, this is not what we are going to talk tonight. I just want to share briefly my uh, my adventure as an art education and how it has affected the 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 the, the, the art appreciation in my own local community. I I teach arts in order to unlock talent, encourage aspiration, and nurture creativity. And I believe that is the, the that is the duty of all art educators. But one thing is like I'm trying to also work around the uh, sustainable development goals. I especially go for team, most especially integration of art education in teaching and learning. I am passionate about art, advancing the learning field of art education and giving my students the best of art education with global perspective. Don't forget, I want you, I want to, I, I just want to make emphasis on that global perspective. Everything I do with my students, I have at the back of my mind that they are not just doing, they should be able to stand shoulder to shoulder to, with their contemporaries outside Nigeria, anywhere in the world. And uh, I, I have been so passionate about that. Personally, just like I said earlier, I work with Taylor British International School. And my school also got the Outstanding School Award last year too. So, um, uh, that is that is my studio there. You can see that is uh, and uh, that is a portrait of my director that I did recently. As it's co it's come up now, that is one of, that is uh, a portrait of my director that I did, Doctor Ola Adegugun. That was five years ago. And what has actually informed my recent project was my trip to Singapore in 2017. In 2017, my school won the Commonwealth Science Class Competition, which I happen to be the coordinator. And one of the one of the prize, uh, winning prize was that the coordinator we visit, we attend the Commonwealth Science Conference in Singapore. But something happened to me that year. I made a, a, a significant discovery, the connection between art and science. And I also I attended a particular art exhibition I attended a particular art exhibition there in, in, in Singapore. That is the future world uh, where art meets science. It was a particular uh, uh, exhibition that actually also changed my perspective about art and how we can also uh, uh, use that to answer certain scientific uh, questions. So I, that year, that same year, I started a particular uh, club in my school and I, I walk around Caleb's team up, and we have developing. We have been developing that, and this year we. Uh, this year it got a name. That is Caleb's team up, where we use we come around and um, uh, and teach students about science, te uh, technology, uh, engineering, art, and mathematics. You know, one of the when you look at the art, uh, the art of place the students are holding there, you can see it's not just art. It is it is involved a lot of other things, other aspects of learning, like science, technology, engineering, mathematics, the calculation involved in putting those work together. So that is what I've been doing. And I work around um, some sustainable development goals. And, and another thing as a, as a as an art educator is like helping the student to develop the 21st century skills, which are collaboration, teamwork creativity and imagination, critical thinking, problem solving, and green consciousness. I will, I, will, I will deliberate more on this as we move on. And in 2019, I attended a particular Skype uh, meeting, lesson, which is Skype, uh, Lita at C Skype lesson. And I got to learn known about the plastic pollution, how plastic affect our world, and since then, I've been I've been engulfed with the with the, with the, with the thought around solving this particular problem. When you look at our environment, we know that we are all guilty of this particular uh, 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 problem issues, the world issues, and uh, that is plastic pollution, plastic everywhere, even even in the in the oceans. In fact, it is so uh, when you visit our beach, you realize that you have a lot of plastic around there. So uh, we started making projects around that. That is 
with climate action and we started making projects, a lot of other projects around solving this particular problem. And uh, how the how the plastic affects the underwater, that is SDG 14, how it affects the life under the water, below water, and also how it affects the human being too. So we created a 3D recycle artwork to call attention to to plastic pollution crisis in the ocean and how it affects and endanger the species underwater. And as you can see in that picture there, in that picture, the particular at the, the that big fish, what happened to big fish like whales is like they see they see they see plastic just like food. They take in plastic just like food. And after a while, their belly gets filled up because this uh, plastic doesn't get decayed. And what happened at the end of the day is that they, their stomach gets filled up and they can't take in more food and the process they died. So this is our project to actually answer, uh, make, create awareness about one of the SDG uh, social, social, uh, sustainable development goals. That is goal for SDG 14. Yeah. So uh, this particular uh, uh, project, you can see it very well in this next image. You can see it very well. It is a 3D project in such a way that you can move around it and look at it. This is using art as a social agent or to, to solve a particular problem problems in our society. And this particular project got us award, was the one that got us award in London this year, got us the David Shepard Award at the Global Canvas Student Art Competition. I was so elated about this. You know, what, I, what, what I'm trying to do in essence is just like, the, the feelings that it gives my students achieving something great for the work they have done, it's, you can't quantify that. You can't quantify it in any way. So it is, it is, it is, it is, it is a very way to even create awareness about art education in our society. And now we are doing it outside the shore of Nigeria. And that actually gathered a lot of publications on newspaper, the nations, and the like, even online publications. And you can see that in the next. So that was not the first time we participated in that particular competition. We participated in, in, in that same uh, competition in 2017, and we got the best international entry. I can see the certificates on the screen right now. And those are the students, those are my students' work. That particular year, we couldn't go to London, but we sent the, uh, the artwork to DHL. We make that effort that to send the artwork. We couldn't make it because of the short notice that, that period. But we were so happy that my school, Keller British International School, got the best international entry at that particular uh, uh, co uh, contest. And, and, and that actually changed the, the student attitudes to the way they accept art, and you can see a lot of it actually improved the, even the the enrollment of art in at the senior level. It will have a lot of other students coming to do art, and this is this is a subject that you have one or two one or two students taking it before, but then after this particular event, it it changed. It it, it the transformation was so enormous. And um, one of my students' work was also selected as for the postcard, one of the postcards that was used in, in, in Chris, during the Christmas that particular year. And we are, doing, with this, we were able to also contribute towards having to save the endangered wildlife. And this very one that we won this year too, we, for a year we got a certificate to to, to adopt a particular uh, reno in, in, in Namibia. And to, we were, we were, probably after the school reason, we might even plan another uh, trip to Namibia to go and see our reno because we will be, we will be uh, 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 funding the, that, comp that content, the prices that we, we are the one fund sponsoring that particular animal for a whole year. So, um, Years back to that was sometimes in 2016. We also we also participated in a global washing day. What I'm just trying to do is like we I use art to get my students involved in certain issues of the society. 
And this particular one, we were, we were able to use their art also to, to campaign for global washing, global hand washing day. And they are, the best artwork at that particular year were printed on, on uh, stickers and pasted around the school community and also even give out as a gift to some of the parents. On Friday, 17 February 2017, we also celebrated the World Poetry Day with an art exhibition which depicts a wide selection of famous poets in the world. So you can see when you come to my school, you see activities, different activities of art. You understand? And, and that is deliberate. That is deliberate. What I'm trying to do is just like, I'm trying to help these students to harness their talent. And another, another thing is just that I'm creating awareness for art education in my community. And a lot of people, a lot of kids are even enjoying that personally. And um, in 2016, that same 2016, we participated in a particular uh, uh, art contest that is Make Art Not War. And my students' work were also, also image winners, and they were also published in this particular uh, uh, book. And that book was distributed around the world. That's a very good one for my students. And they are also advancing their work in, on international level. Also, in 2017, their work was also published on a particular calendar, Children International Mangrove Art Calendar in 2019. And this particular one, they, 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 they selected 13 students from all over the world. And my students, just for, for a country, and my students represented Nigeria in this country. In fact, we actually put the name of Nigeria in, on this particular uh, calendar. And then, you know, it was distributed around the world, around the globe. And that is a very good one for us as a school and also as a nation. And um, in 2018, I attended the INSEA conference in, uh, in Egypt. And um, there is a particular project then uh, that is um, uh, uh, peace, Art for Peace in Africa project. Um, I, we, my students also participated in that particular work. I took their work there. You can see in the in the image uh, on the screen right now. You can see how my fellow art educators around the world love the, the my students' work, and also one of them was selected for INSEA postcard for that particular year, and that was even even used to celebrate International Art Education Week. One thing about about this, I love about is like this particular. Uh, postcard was published in 14 languages of the world. And, you know, you can imagine how far that must have traveled. In that same in 2018, that was when I was about having my touch eye. And I traveled to Namibia and um, I also, my student, that's my student work that I put together as a ball, as a globe. We are actually using that too for art piece project in, in, in Africa. And that also solve, also we are also working around the SDG 16 in that. That is has to do with peace and resolution. So, and um, in 2018, my students work too uh, was also we participated in the, in the mask prize and competition that was in Kenya, and we also emerged some of the winners there too. And um, a particular one, you know, I'm just so uh, concerned about the issue of society, community, environment, uh, more like environmental uh, projects. And in this particular year, we use plastic bottles to create those uh, butterflies. And we use it to around the, and, uh, uh, to, we display it in, in our school. And a lot of people fall in love with this project. One thing is like they took a lot of picture with it because when you stand at the, at the, at, at the center of the, each of those uh, piece, you, 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 you feel, have a feeling like you are a butterfly and you can fly. You can do whatever you want to do. You can achieve whatever you want to achieve in life. It is, it's, you know, we have to also, also register in the consortium, uh, subconscious mind of our students that they can achieve their goals. Whatever goals they set for themselves, they can achieve that. This particular one too was also about goal 16. And also uh, that you can see SDG 16, the peace, justice, and strong institution. One of my students also worked on that. And this particular one was also published in calendar and uh, uh, um, uh, educative materials to campaign against 
uh, uh, drug abuse in the society, and also also to talk about peace and justice in our society there. In, in 2019, that was last year, I invited a particular a friend of mine in the INSEA to, uh, to my school, that is Dr. Angela. We actually created a lot of, a lot of atmosphere for art education in my school. The art, we celebrated the international community. Most art teachers don't know about the international, uh, international art education week. It usually come every fourth week of May every year, fourth week of, of the month of May every year. And this particular one, we celebrated it big, and it was also published in certain uh, newspaper. This particular one was published on Business Day newspaper. And you can see the activity of my student. They, everybody was so happy because we created a platform for them to express themselves. We gave them materials and people come. In fact, it was a very wonderful event. And again, I, I also, Dr. Angela also takes some of my art class. You know, the feeling is great for my students, having somebody outside Nigeria to actually take them on art education. It's, it's, it's just so wonderful. And um, I, to close, I, I would like to close with this. I'm so passionate about art education and I work around art education. And one of the reasons why we are bringing art educators together tonight is like so that we can inspire one another. We can do, see, the development of art education in Nigeria lies in all of us. Every time we talk, we can't stop talking about Chief Aino Onobolu because if not for this man, probably some of us might not even do art education in school. Probably that might not even be because one of the one of the protege of uh, Aino Nobolu was the one that founded the department, the art department, the school that I attended, that's the University of Benin. Uh, Solomon Wangweje was the one that founded the art department in that particular school. If the if there if there is no art department, probably I might not have anywhere to even study art at that particular level. And I and I also have my second degree in art education. It is all my life has always been about art, and I just want to encourage all of us to to in our local small local community we can do so much. Just little 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 effort. Our effort can actually change the the way people see art. Yes, but. I don't. I think it's still happening now. They see art, art, uh, uh, science subject is above all every other subject like art, and all the all the other subjects were put were relegated related in the background. But we should we should always let the community know that art is so important, and they can all know about the importance of art. It is by when we are engaging in it. We should not just teach us just the way the the English teacher will teach English. Art has to be practical for everybody. We have to try as much as possible that we make our art practical and people can see it, they can feel it. It is very important. So this is a project we, we, we I did with one of my one of my masters too. That is Dr. Adele. Dr. Adele just came in too. That was in Abelkuta. This project was a wonderful project about this particular kids you are seeing on screen right now. They are the ones that lost their parents all far in the north during the Boko Haram uh, uh, expedition. And these, parents, these kids, they have lost their parents. And a particular orphanage in, in Abelkuta brought them to Abelkuta, that is Stephen Center in Abelkuta. And we use, we use this particular as, as, uh, uh, art, art engagement as a therapy for them to express the way they feel about the incident. And this was a very wonderful, we got so very, a very good strong uh, uh, result about this project. And um, I will have to close with this. In all, in all my students have used their, their artwork to address different issues around the world. I want to continue to inspire innovative teaching and improve on the quality of education in my community and make global influence in education. I want to provide art education that is accessible and engaging for as many kids as possible. I am available for collaborative work in education and environment sustainability project. What I'm trying to say is that I'm always available. Anybody that is interested to come, even come to my school. I have a, I have a, I have, I have a director that, that, that is so passionate about education too, and it, it makes things easier for us to collaborate. We can do a lot of projects 
you can also my student can also do a lot of uh, collaborative work with other artists out there so this with this i just want to say thank you for very much for listening to me and um probably we have any and any anyone in in the house tonight that want to also to do something like this to inspire other other arts educators can also do this in the, ne in the next meeting this come up every every sunday at 8 p.m thank you so much for listening now we can take question So guys, the end. It's question time now. If you have questions for our presenter tonight, what you just need to do is to there is a and uh, uh, icon on your screen. You just click on it and then you can ask your question. And I'm seeing uh, a particular uh, and raise up now. That's Yusuf Abdus Ablu Rasak. Sir, do you have a question? Yeah, good evening. I'm Yusuf Abdrazak. I'm, the, I'm uh, talking from Zari. Uh, I am probably have a day. And uh, uh, I have not been happy for mixing some of the ones that have passed before. Uh, and I think I must give credit to the two presenters this evening. Uh, you, my Just an additional thing for the first presenter. I felt that at this time that we are presenting now, we are trying to right the wrong of the past. Like Kitty rightly mentioned, along the course of his presentation, that we learn and unlearn. Uh, the word OC, that he, he pronounced at that time, the correct pronunciation is OC, OC in learning. Okay. And I felt that this is good for all because uh, the man speaking is the Yoruba man, and OC is a Yoruba town. And I think we can forgive anybody who is not a Yoruba, but that's not even forgiving because we learned, we have seen for some people who are not uh, Yoruba speakers, but they strive as much as possible to make sure that uh, the pronunciations are correct. And since we are educators and we are trying to right the wrong, and because some of these things are written down or as pronounced by some people, it's been ages, it's been years. And if we are doing it now, I think that we should just try to correct it. So it's pronounced OC. My other take is on the issue of the first act mask. And I get worried every time they say it's first act mask, first act mask. If you go back to history, that mask has been done before the first act. It was only adopted. And I feel again as educators, we should go back and try to see what is the original name of that mask. Or perhaps, wouldn't it be safer to just say it's many masks? I think this is just my contribution. But other than that, I think this has been wonderful. In fact, I'm impressed, and I feel that we should keep the flag flying. Thank you very much. This is my contribution. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Rasad. Um, I think uh, from what I have learned so far about that particular mask is the face of India from Benin. So that is just my contribution to that. And I don't know if Mr. Olaf maybe will to that. Mr. Olaf, maybe you can hear you. Your mic is muted. I can see you are trying to talk. Mr. Olaf, maybe you can hear you. Your, check your mic. Your mic is muted. Oh, thank you. So um, I I thank I thank the 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 speaker the, the person that spoke the other time I mean the one who raised the issue of the the mask uh, shown in my presentation. Actually, the the mask is Bini mask as I rightly mentioned, but it was used during the uh, Festival of Arts and culture in 1977. The, the, the mask in, in question happened to be the, the mask 
you know, that the uh, Oba of Bini uh, produced for, uh, I mean, the, the, the mother Queen India, who happened to be the mother of Oba of uh, Bini, you know, uh, in Bini Kingdom. So um, I equally want to thank him for correcting me on how to pro pronounce that uh, the name of uh, uh, Are Ogun's uh, place in, in, in Lorne, Usi. Thank you so much. Um, more so, I still want to, I, I want to believe that, uh, yes, this garden is good enough to, you know, refresh ourselves and at the same time to bring to beer some of the things that uh, maybe uh, we are not privy to, or that uh, we believe that is going to equally help us to put things right and to know exactly what uh, we equally inspire us to, you know, uh, remember the past and at the same time refine the past to fit into the current situation. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, um, let, we can take more questions now. Co questions, contributions. But well, if you have to do that, please raise. You, you, there is a, a hand icon. Let me let just click on that, then I can call you. I don't know if uh, Dr. Mayer from South Africa would like to make contribution tonight. Dr. Mayer. Uh, yes. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much for the two very good presentations. Uh, it was very insightful and also gave us uh, a good overview of your, um, what is happening in your country and also on the academic and, uh, you know, uh, the unsung heroes, as well as the unsung hero of being an art teacher. <laughs> um, okay, uh, what I would like to know um, from the first gentleman is whether those centers that were um, erected for the um, for the traditional artists are they still fully operational and are they still uh, commercially viable so that people are actually supporting the traditional art uh, firstly uh, and then um, uh, yeah, uh, to you, Prince, I would like to ask, uh, you know, you've reached so many heights now in your artistic art education career. Um, will you, how do you see your future? Where do you think you can actually now extend further as it looks as if you have reached your, uh, you, you know, your niche? Uh, what what do you think will keep you um, uh, um going in terms of the next challenge or the next bar that you want to see and also how do you feel that COVID have, has influenced your um, educational practices so it's basically the frequent about traditional art centers in uh, which in South Africa, we've got really uh, a shortage of that. We used to have quite a few very good organized centers, but they seem to have uh, been dismantled. You know, there's been all sorts of politics around that. So I just want to hear how Nigeria is um, managing and organizing the arts and uh, then from yours, as I said, those two questions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much for your questions. Uh, Mr. Aladimiji, I think you should just answer the first question. You need to unmute, you need to unmute your mic, sir. Mr. Aladimiji, your mic is muted. Okay, uh, please the question again, sorry. Okay, um, no. Dr. Mayer, can you take your first question again? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, um, I asked if the traditional um, centers where people used to do uh, the artwork and the, the traditional work that you showed that, that was coming from Nigeria, are they still uh, organized traditional art centers that are practicing traditional art 
in your country and how well okay. are they organized and, and commercially promoted? Oh, thank you so much for that uh, question. Uh, actually, um, as I rightly mentioned in the presentation, that uh, in 1920, uh, uh, that is uh, 19, between 1930 to 1960, uh, traditional art uh, practice was, uh, you know, uh, discouraged in Nigeria. But much later, we came to realize that, yes, this thing is our own. If somebody came from somewhere, sorry, if somebody came from somewhere to condemn what we have, it is the honors now rest on us to either follow what people from outside told us about our own uh, culture, uh, or either to reject it or to embrace it. But much later, we discovered that yes, what belongs to us belongs to us not to any other person. And the uniqueness of our art is what the outsiders are equally looking for. So as a result, uh, now there are a lot of uh, resuscitations because uh, people are coming back to, you know, uh, resuscitate the old uh, art practice, you know, with a little, uh, uh, a little bit of embellishment now, you know, in order to fit into the global uh, acceptance. So uh, now we we equally have some traditional ones that are, you know, still practicing uh, traditional art. And likewise, uh, even in academic, you know, we have a place for, you know, all these indigenous uh, arts. And in our art history, we equally. Uh, you know, emphasize on it to let them know the the, the, the skills that, uh, you know, our past heroes have contributed to, uh, I mean, to global arts. Because if you, if you go to Europe, uh, I'm talking of uh, Britain, America, uh, France, and some other places like that, you see the product of a uh, uh, traditional uh, product of arts you know, all over the place. And it is even difficult for us to access some of those things because before we can have access to it, we pay before we can even see. So that is to let us know that uh, something good is in that art that the world is looking for. It is high time that we, you know, resuscitate it and at the same time package it in a way that uh, the globe, uh, I mean, the entire world, we, uh, you know, embrace it because what we have in terms of skill and creativity to contribute to the world is enormous and um, uh, 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 it's not something that anybody that it's not something that anybody can just kill like that thank you so much i i believe i, I i've answered that a question okay thank you mr oladi meji i will quickly um mention a few um, statement about uh, the other question. Um, as an art educator, what I'm trying to do right now, Mr. Alajme, can you please uh, move your mic, please? Okay, let okay. me move it from this end. Okay, as an art educator, what I'm trying to do is is to also open up uh, collaboration. You know, one of the 21st century skill is collaboration, and I'm 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 so practical about this. I'm trying to also open uh, collaboration with art educators outside, even outside the shore of Nigeria. Um, during this uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic lockdown, uh, my my school went online. We, are, we do our classes online, and I've been able to even bring on board some of my friends from Portugal and Europe uh, into my class, interacting with my students. I want to open them up for that interaction, and I want it to continue. I want it to be progressive, not just that something I will do one, at one time and just leave it there, but I want it to be uh, a, a continuous effort. And I'm also making effort to also, just like I, we are having discussion tonight, this conversation tonight, I, I, will, be so, I will be so glad for, to, for my students for my accident to also have some things to do with some 
artists in the house tonight. So that is what I'm just to do. I'm, I'm opening up collaboration as an artist and as an, as an art educator, and also to open up opportunity for my students so that they can also learn from other uh, art educators around the globe. So that is what I'm doing now, and, and I'm so passionate about that. Thank you so much. And I don't know if you have other people to ask questions. Don't forget that is, and I, okay, Mr. Onobolu, you can speak now, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I'm so impressed with what I have um, from the teacher at Caleb. They have been so busy and um, we just have to study the good news, study the good news, practicalizing and encouraging. My prayer is that when the students leave the school, they will be more um, to act. But Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Probably you need to move closer to your or your device because uh, we, got, we are getting some echo from your background, so that we can hear you very well. I would like to hear your statement very well. Probably you should start all over. Thank you, sir. Okay. I'm so excited about everything. That's what I learned today. More especially concerning the art teacher at Caleb. He has been able to really push the students. And um, I come to realize that he has been very, very busy. My prayer is that when the students leave the school, they will check it up and continue from where he left them. There is something that really bothers me. And that, well, that is why we we start our art. The Bini art, it's a heart, all the indigenous art that have names, uh, traditional art. Because all over the world, there are traditions. But we don't call them traditional art. Do we want to say when we go to other parts of the world and they refer to us, we want to call it traditional art? I understand what you mean by looking inward and trying to make it happen. Maybe you are looking at it from the basis as a young woman, but I think we should be more and more specific when we talk about our art so that it will become richer and um, have better taste than just calling it traditional art. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know if um, somebody, I don't want Mr. Oladimeji yeah. to respond to that now. I would like somebody in the house to respond so that we, this, this conversation, conversation can go around. Mr. Oladimeji will okay. still respond, but I don't know if you have somebody in the house to respond to that. I want this conversation to go around so that everybody can participate. It is art, art educator and hangout. We are here to hang out and discuss and uh, learn from one another. Do we have somebody that would like to respond to that? Okay, Mr. Alani, Alani, do you want to respond to that? Or Mr. Yusuf? Or yeah, hello. Yeah. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. <coughs> yeah, this is Mr. Alani. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello, hello. Now uh, my college in Ecuador. I mean, yeah. If you do, uh, let me just continue. Uh, so the first question, I didn't hear the question very well, but let me. The little I have from you is that uh, you see, you see uh, we can't run away from the world tradition. The traditional aspect of it is very common to Africa. Thank God that we have uh, upgraded from local. The word local shouldn't be at all, and we cannot go to native. So the word tradition is very, very common to Africa, and it makes our work more original. So the genuity of our work is more tradition, it's more culture, it's our, it's our life in Africa. So maybe, 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 maybe if I can hear the question very well, I'll be able to explain it better. But we will really want to talk about 
fact is that uh, we, we, we are going away from some silent points, especially from my colleagues, uh, online media, about uh, India and um, uh, President the 77. I, I believe we should talk more about why. Why? Why do, do you think the federal government or uh, accepted uh, India aid? We should look about who, who is that India? Who works? Let me use who works now. India. I'm saying for you, Ben. I love that, uh, in, uh, that that head is a queen's head of Yoruba in Yoruba. They call it Yoruba India. That is a, 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 a king's mother. And uh, if if India has can give me more, more, more time again next week, maybe if it's 10 minutes or five, I will move to talk more about your bad India. That's why this is some other time, sir, because of our time. Thank you so <laughs> much, sir, for that contribution. Thank you so much because of our time. Let us now, we, this is about 17 minutes after nine. I want us to always take it as brief as possible. Probably we should just take one, one or two comments before we end it tonight. Uh, uh, Mrs. Adeni is in house from the Ministry of Education, Lagos State. Ma, would you like to make a comment, Ma? Mrs. Adeni, would you like to make a comment, Ma? To do that, you have to uh, mute your mic, Ma. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Um, Dr. Adenle, we like to make a comment before we close tonight. <laughs> Dr. Adenle, sir, we like to make a comment before we close it. Close, uh, close Hello, this meeting tonight. Okay, can you hear me, please? Yes, ma, we can. Yes, ma, you can yes, hear me. Can go ahead, ma. Yes, ma. Okay. Ahead, Good evening, Mr. Educators in the house. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, um, I'm also much impressed with what I had this evening. Uh, the first uh, speaker taught us about the history of heart in, in Africa. Uh, really did a good job. Uh, there were a lot of things that I've taken for granted, and I learned them today. So kudos to you hey, and to so my dear brother, the the great art educator at Caleb International uh, British School. You have been a wonderful, hey, wonderful, man. wonderful teacher to your children, to so all the students in this school. You are an amazing teacher to them, not because I, I, uh, I've known you, but because of the work that you have done, you've done tremendously hard work, a lot of hard work for the children. In everything, you put your children first, you, are, you focus on the children, just like you have become uh, like an expert in the field. You want those children to also fall in love with what you are doing and perhaps take it up as a career and you have done wonderfully well i, I cannot but just be proud of you and for all the other ed educators in the house i wouldn't mind anytime you're having your session i would like to join because I, i'm a person that is passionate about education and i i know that as a teacher that i am though I don't teach in the classroom again, but I'm still a teacher, as a coach, as a trainer, as a mentor. I will always be a teacher for life. And I, I believe that I've learned so much. And that is the idea that every teacher must have, that in everything, money must not come first, but learning to come first. I've really learned this evening. And for all the contributors, I say, I, I want to say kudos to all of you. Bravo, you have done well. You, uh, I wouldn't mind when when work starts fully. So we are just partially going to the office. I wouldn't mind to discuss with uh, with them at our office to say that yes, we have some some teachers 
who are really who know their onions, who want to put art into limelight. Just like Mr. Denny said earlier on, that a lot of people believe that it's only when you are in the sciences that you you, you are doing something well. But we, we, what you have said this night really make me to believe that yes, art is also as important as other careers, as other subjects. And if you can have the best brains, not just people who use it as a second, in that, oh, if I don't do well here, then I will take up part. Let's have our best brain in the heart. And we can, we, we can use it just like you have said, the 21st century skills, learning skills, that our children will be more creative, they'll be able to think critically, they'll be able to communicate, and then, and just to sum up everything, they'll be able to collaborate because the world is, is not an island. Every one of us, we need one another. There must be a team bond amongst us so that we can, our world can be a better place. There can be peace, more peace in the world. There can be eradication of diseases in the world if there is more collaboration. So for this evening, I'm really, really grateful for the giving to me to join this uh, webinar. Uh, I'm so grateful, and I say kudos to all of you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Hello? Ma. God bless you. Thank you so much, Ma. Okay, um, let's just take one Hello or the two house. Uh, contribution. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I want to all the art educators in the house tonight. Actually, what we are doing is that uh, we are making history. And then um, Mr. Shegun can bear me witness. We have been in this business of promoting art education all this while. At least I want to believe that maybe in the next uh, presentation, maybe in the next presentation, if I'll be given chance, I'll come and give account of five years uh, projects that I have done. And, um, and, and I want to leave that uh, looking at it, you know, what we have done so far for the past five years, then uh, you'll be able to judge whether we are really promoting art education or not. Because it's like in this part of the world, um, art education is something that people don't really see as anything important. And this is reflecting in virtually everything that we are doing. Uh, the element and the principle of art, when it is, uh, you know, minus out of whatever we are doing in life, is going to really ma and the perfection and what is expected of us will not be achieved because what the feed of art education has to offer, no other feed can offer it. If you go and check the history, you will discover that even all the scientists, I mean, those scientists of the past who have done great works like uh, uh, Michelangelo, like uh, Rafael Sancho, and some of them like uh, Leonardo da Vinci, many of them, you know, were artists. And their art knowledge really helped them in, you know, producing stunt works, works that are even up to date are yet to be, you know, beaten by anybody. So uh, I want to believe that good things is, is happening now. And then we equally look forward to see others from other parts of the world to come and equally educate us more about the type of art they practice. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, quickly, I'm going to also talk about this conference. Um, this is International Virtual Conference coming up in the, in the month of October. That is October 12 to 15, 2020. I would like us to register for this. The, the, the uh, website to register is inciaconference.org. 
dot com as it is written on the on the on the screen as you can see that on the screen so i would like us to be part of this i'm also going to be part of it as one of the guest speaker and uh, i think it is another another opportunity for all of us to also be part to partake in in a global uh, engagement that is art education in the time of coronavirus reflecting on today and anticipating tomorrow the conference as I said earlier, it's coming up in the month of October 2020. And uh, with this, I would like to just say, I don't know if we can just take one more person, one more comment. Uh, I can see Kennedy, Kennedy Abel wanted to say something. Are you ready to make your comment? Go ahead, sir. Yes, I'm good to go. Yes, good evening, uh, the whole house. Yeah, I, I'm really excited. To, to have art uh, educators uh, doing something very strategic, especially at this time of COVID-19 um, pandemic. Of course, uh, I, I have been an art teacher and um, anything that has to do with art education, I will be part of it. It's unfortunate I didn't join the meeting earlier because I, I think I got the uh, invitation very late. I had certain challenges with my phone, but I just want to say Kudos to all of you, all those who have uh, uh, put this uh, program together. And I think it's a good thing that artists, art educators are really coming together, you know, to make a mark, especially in this time like this. And I want to congratulate us for, you know, keeping the art flag flying. Unfortunately, I didn't, I missed so much. I wish uh, the recorded version could be, okay. be posted so that those of us who didn't have the opportunity of joining earlier could uh, review the video. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you so let's... much, Mr. Kendall. Thank you so much, very much, Mr. Kendall. As you can see, um, we can get the, that on our blog. It's also in the invitation that we sent out. That is teaching visual arts blogspot.com the video will be loaded uploaded before tuesday or by tuesday this week the okay. the one of this week and the one of last week so you can watch the recap of, of what we have done so far and you can see some other video there we have some other video of some of our uh, meeting on that particular blog so right now we are we'll be having our update on that particular blog and you can also whenever you miss a meeting like this you can also go there and get more information and updates there so i just want to say at this junction i want to say thank you so much for everybody that have taken time to be part of this tonight next week is another time on sunday yeah. and uh, at the same time 8 p.m that is west africa time and it is 7 p.m uh gmt i don't know if uh, our uh, the INSEA representative that is the world counselor for africa of in the international society of art education to art if you have one com if you can take one more comment from her then we close for tonight Christiana Africa, we would like to make a comment before we close tonight. Okay, okay, we can. I think we can take that next at uh, the next meeting. So at this junction, I want to say thank you so much once again for joining us tonight, and we can take our questions. Let us always come early for our next meeting. And at this junction, I'm saying uh, our our brother from um, Brazil. I just want to say thank you for always joining us. You have been so constant consistent with us that's jose marino camo i know i don't know if i pronounce that, that name very well we'd like to see also see you presenting next week and uh, one of these meetings to just to present what is happening in brazil so, so i want some of we can all learn from you next week so at this junction i'm saying good night to everybody and i'm going to end the meeting just now thank you so much for joining us god bless you Thank you for having us.